So guys, today I'm going to continue this series. Uh, today I'm going to do some traps that we can lay down on the ground and, you know, make the zombies... Um, if zombies pass through them, they're going to explode, and they're going to have a little radius um, for the detonation, and then the radius for the damage. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. So first of all, I'm going to find my third-person character. Oh, not my third-person character, sorry. Uh, my player character and I'm going to find some empty space over here I don't know I'm gonna lay down traps pressing Z I guess you can use whatever key you want oh it's up okay there you go keyboard event Z then if you press this we're gonna check our score and basically I'm going to make uh, so every trap you put down you're gonna remove some score from your um, from your you know your pool of score so I'm going to check if my score is bigger or equal to the price that we want I'm just gonna say 50 um, actually no I'm gonna make it less like 15 so it's easier for us to test I'm gonna create a branch and if this is true I'm going to set the score to the score minus the 15 and then I'm going to you know update the score and then I'm going to basically spawn a new actor from class uh, and this class uh, we're gonna have to create it so let's go into our blueprints I'm going to go for weapons, and I'm just going to create a new blueprint class. I'm just going to call, uh, make it an actor. I'm going to call this trap. Going to double click that open, and just going to leave it there. Go back to the player character, and just find the trap here. The spawn transform. I'm just going to get the actor transform. So basically, it's going to spawn at our feet. And I'm going to make it always spawn and ignore the, ignore the collisions. The owner, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to get self. But it doesn't really matter. I just like to always plug in the owner because it might be useful. And the return value, I don't think we need to do anything with it. I guess we just want to spawn. So now I'm going to go into the trap and I'm just going to add, uh, delete this scene, add a new static mesh. Uh, drag it for you know to be the root and I'm just gonna get uh, whatever is your trap mesh I don't have one so I'm just gonna use a cube I guess and I'm just gonna uh, reduce its size to 0.1 so it's smaller and kind of just put the Z a little bit even smaller 2.05 or something like that and uh, you know now we should be ready to test Let's play this. I'm going to play and now I'm going to press Z. And wait. Oh, okay. Um, first of all, okay, uh, these are that I don't have to do with um, the score. The thing is that I'm spawning this with this transform. I do not want this. So I'm going to delete this and get the actor uh, location, just a location. And then I'm going to split the struct pin and just drag this in. This way, um, oh yeah, and I actually noticed that we're basically, you know, on the ground. Um, I, I mean, floating in me there. So I don't want that. I'm just going to get a new camera, uh, not camera, arrow. I'm going to pick this arrow and I'm just going to drag it to where I want the the thing to spawn so I'm just gonna say over here so this is basically at the feet of the character I am going to um, delete this sorry and I'm gonna go into arrow 1 get the location and if we do this we will have our trap spawning at our feet pretty easily so let's just press start I'm gonna press Z and why is the cube so big? That's what I don't understand. Um, 
I already did it. Okay, let I guess we need to set up the transform over here. So I'm gonna go into point one, point one, and zero point five. Let's try that again. So I'm gonna press Z, and as you can see, we have our little mine over here. So you'll basically just use one of your meshes for a trap. I'm just using this, you know, as a placeholder. Now that we actually spawn this, we're gonna want to add two um, collisions. So I'm just gonna go and get a sphere collision. I'm actually gonna make this the root. Actually, no. Uh, um, it's better that we leave the mesh because we do not want this to, uh, you know, block things. We're just gonna put this to into overlap all. And I'm just going to duplicate this sphere. I'm gonna call this the detonation and I'm gonna call this the damage and from the second sphere I am going to okay I'm just going to the static mesh and resize this because otherwise the the spheres are going to be you know uh, their size is going to be small anyway and as you can see the size doesn't change because we are already scaling it down over here. So we can leave the, the scale of the, um, the root 111. For the detonation range, I'm going to increase this radius. And I guess if a zombie steps on it, I'm going to add it 300. And I'm just going to do something. I'm going to uncheck it in in-game so we can see the radius in-game. So press Z. And you can see this is the detonation. Maybe this is a little bit too small. So I'm gonna multiply this by 3. It's gonna be 900. I know in the viewport it seems bigger than it is. But it's actually not that big. So I'm going to start. And as you can see, this is the detonation. And I'm seeing that we are walking over it. Or I cannot walk over it actually. Why is that? Because I unchecked and made this overlap all. I guess it's because of the collision of the root. Let's go over here and say overlap all as well. And now if you do that and try again. Okay, I'm confused. Why is this not working? Detonation is overlap all. The damage is overlap all. Oh, we are blocking the player. Okay, let's put this into custom and say overlap as well. To overlap the player. Now if you start, press Z. Boom. God damn it, I'm okay I guess we gotta do this with um uh with each first as well, so let's say custom and say overlap all go into the damage put this into custom and say overlap all and now it should work there you go, now we can walk over it, doesn't happen anything and it doesn't matter if the player overlaps because then we're going to check if this is actually a zombie so the player doesn't actually trigger this now something that is going to get even bigger is going to be the detonation range. So the, not the detonation, the, the damage range. So if you go over here, this is 32. The detonation is 900. Now we're going to want to make this, I don't know, 10 times bigger, I guess. So let's see how big this is, uh, actually in game. I'm going to press Z and you can see this is the, the range of the damage, maybe this is a little bit too much, so let's reduce that. And obviously, you're gonna be wanting to play around with these values by yourself. So from 9,000, I'm gonna go to 7,500. Now I'm gonna play, start. There you go. I think I'm gonna do, uh, you know, this damage radius. It seems good. So now I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna hide this again. Actually, for testing purposes, I'm gonna leave it on. Now we're gonna have to do two things. Let's just delete everything that is right now in the event graph. We draw a detonation. 
and we're just gonna need a begin overlap for the detonation let's go into the damage and we actually don't need anything here so if anything the other actor we're going to cast to the zombie character so if then if a zombie actor actually triggers this we are just going to first apply damage but we're gonna want to apply radial damage because remember we actually do have a fall off and I guess we do not need this actually let's say the damage radius to be 500 so this basically is going to be 505 meters the base damage that we want we want to make let's say 100 so everyone that actually steps in is going to actually die the origin is going to be the get actor location and we're gonna want to ignore actors so let's drag from over here make an array and now we can actually get the owner so this owner is going to be our character so hopefully our character is going to be ignored and I guess this is alright and we actually don't need this this is a bug uh, I think if you right click and refresh no there you go that is a bug if you actually call something you know that is not requiring a pin it will create that world context pin we don't need that so after we do this I'm just going to destroy the trap itself because you know it's gonna be destroyed now if we play this and actually wait for a zombie to get in so let's start I'm gonna go over here press Z I'm gonna have a trap here now I'm gonna have to make a zombie walk over here and where are they oh there they come so I'm gonna have to make the zombies walk over here and because you can see that they're both very close to each other okay okay that how did I manage to miss all of them that is actually stupid okay why the fuck wait nothing is happening why the hell is that I'm overlapping all why is this no collision okay there was a bug we actually don't use this damage thing uh, we actually don't need it so you can delete that but the, the bug here was that um, the collision enable was off actually uh, although we had this that was fucking weird now it should work just make sure that your collision is properly set up otherwise that what just happened to me will happen to you and I guess it will be easier for us to go like in some place like this place a trap there you go we have a zombie coming right over here so hopefully he's going to die or maybe not but it hmm. maybe we need more damage because we are using radial damage so we're gonna have to play around with these values So let me put the base damage 150 and this way I'm sure that the zombie will die the one that is crossing over because the damage fall off is going to be linear so you know you you can be like uh, 10 centimeters off the center and you will only suffer like 98 percent damage and that's not enough to kill a zombie oh I need to set down the trap there you go so I guess I have two zombies coming over let me kill this one oh great I missed again now that's just okay as you can see that zombie died and this one died with one shot although the weapon does not do 100 damage so as you can see we have a uh, damage uh, you know fall off and zombies will actually die on the trap now before you actually destroy the actor you can like spawn an emitter at location you can spawn the explosion and you can play a sound so play sound 
at location and the sound can be the explosion as well and the location is going to be the actor location so now you can play again I think the sound is gonna be a little bit too loud so you better you know lower your volume or something so there's a zombie coming over here let's just place a trap here actually there's two of them so they're gonna come around and they're gonna go through the trap oh yeah I forgot to tell you that there's actually a bug um, with this project I actually can't hear any sound uh, I don't know why this happened in this project but on your end it should be working fine so that's it uh, I've created a trap uh, you can set up your own static mesh and you can change your values of the radius and the base damage and work around with this you can put your own effects over here and yeah that's pretty cool I guess so I hope you guys enjoy this video on the next one on this series I'm not really sure what to do next um, maybe I'll set up like some kind of random box type thing so you know you can get uh, you know a random weapon or basically create something that will give you a random number or y and then you can you know create your own stuff from there because I don't have any weapon meshes to actually do a random weapon box but yeah I'll set you up with the code and then you can just add your own meshes so yeah thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one bye bye